I'm Ernie Humphrey, Educational Programs Leader for Performative, the largest online community for corporate finance, accounting, treasury, and related professionals. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Financial Consolidation, Leveraging Technology to Collect, Consolidate, and Report with These. Cloud technology delivers faster and more reliable consolidation, allowing the Office of Finance to move beyond mere reporting and into the analysis of the how and why events occur. Today, our featured speaker, Sandra Highgate, will show us how companies of all sizes are leveraging PropX10 to automate the entire process from data collection to financial consolidation to report generation and deliver strategic value from the closing process. I would like to thank PropX, whose commitment to thought leadership helps us make this webinar possible and delivered at no cost. A quick note on today's agenda. First, we'll hear a presentation from our featured speaker, Sandra Highgate, and then we'll move to our interactive Q&A session where we will spend the remainder of our hour. We would like this to be an interactive experience for you. So if you have any questions at any time, please go to the questions area and you go to webinar control panel and send us your questions. We can't promise to get all them in, but we will do our best and we'll follow up afterwards on any questions we did not get to. A few logistical notes about the webinar. A link to today's presentation and video recording in this webinar will be sent out to all attendees within 24 hours of the event. And please note the presentation is already posted at www.performative.com slash resources for free download. Note today's webinar includes a tech demo and as such is not eligible for CPE credit. Again, we encourage you to ask questions on today's topic via the questions box in your GoToWebinar control panel at any time during the webinar. Finally, you'll be asked to take a short survey today regarding the webinar. We greatly appreciate your feedback regarding our event today as we always strive to improve the ROI we offer our event attendees for their valuable time. A quick word about Performative. Performative is the largest online community and resource for senior level corporate finance, accounting, treasury, and related leaders. Performative connects corporate finance leaders to provide instant advice and insights on the tough financial and strategic challenges they face every day. Let's get started by introducing today's featured speaker, Sandra Highgate, CMA Solutions Engineer, Profit Software. As a solutions engineer, Sandra is responsible for giving demonstrations to prospective customers that answers their questions about how Profix can help and benefit them. Sandra has been with Profix for over eight years and spent most of her time working in professional services, implementing the Profix solution in the following positions. Subject matter expert, project manager, and senior consulting. Prior to joining Profix, Sandra has been an internal and external auditor, auditor sales, budget, and financial analyst, accounting supervisor, and accounting manager in public accounting, manufacturing, and retail industries. Sandra holds a certificate in information systems management and a diploma in business administration with a focus on accounting and is a certified management accountant. With that, it is my distinct pleasure to hand the presentation over to Sandra Highgate, Solutions Engineer, Profix Software. Sandra, please go ahead and take it away for us. Good afternoon, everybody. Consolidating multiple legal entities has many challenges, and Profix offers solutions. Collecting data and ensuring its integrity is very difficult when you're collecting from multiple sources. Some of these entities can even be in different countries and currencies. We will look at how Profix can streamline and automate the collection and preparation of multiple legal entities. Once collected, this consolidated data can be adjusted for GAAP, IFRS, FASB, and other, and other ways, and intercompany eliminations as required. We will then look at how we can streamline and automate reporting. Consolidating in an Excel environment is prone to errors, time consuming, and slows down the ability to get reports to key stakeholders. Profix automates and streamlines end to end. From the collection all the way through to pushing reports out the door can be fully or partially automated with checks and balances throughout the system. Today, I've, I'm going to be doing this presentation concentrating in the three areas, collect, consolidate, and report. First, we'll start with collect, where I'll be talking about importing, being able to add or change structures in, that, in an Excel environment that usually encompasses adding more sheets, and then currency translation, because the world has become a much smaller place. Now, part of the collection of the data, and you've got all these different disparate systems, Profix was actually designed to assist people where they're using Excel to bring in many disparate systems, and especially if they have different charts of accounts. We're able to bring multiple different charts of accounts into the profits environment by mapping tables. So here, we can take company A having, having their chart of accounts map to the profits. And we do that in a simple two-column chart. 
in which internal is the information inside profits, and the external is the, um, the chart of account in the system that you're bringing in. So for instance, account 1000 would be mapped to 12130. This can be set up once in the profits environment, easy to maintain by adding in new lines as needed, but it's very reusable. At Profits, we have the philosophy of you build it once and use it many times. And this is just one of many examples that we have. Profits naturally aggregates or rolls up data. When you've got multiple currency involved, we actually assign that currency to the legal entity. A currency like US dollar would roll up, and then you can choose the reporting currency that you want to use for your reporting. The chart of accounts would be separated between the balance sheet and income statements, where in the balance sheet you can use a month end or spot rate, an income statement at an average rate. Now let's actually go into profits and let me show you what we're talking about. So here's an example of an import process with currency translation already set up. So here, I'm just going to go up to this top area. We can set up multiple imports from all those different disparate systems. We also can import directly from uh, over 200 known systems through ODBC connections. Now, that is uh, online database connectivity, which is an industry standard for com uh, computers talking to each other. Profits can connect to anything that meets that industry standard. We also can connect directly from access database tables, Excel, and text files very easy, e easily using a wizard. This wizard's already been uh, created for here, and I have three pickup points for uh, adjusting this wizard if I need to. But generally, it's another one of those items where we set it up once and can use it many times. So here, we're picking up the wizard at the, near the end point where we can choose what type, how we're going to bring the data, remove the existing target data, or add to the existing, because this depends on what type of data you are bringing in. The time format. Clicking on the next button, we're actually doing the mapping, which means the columns that are in your source information to where it goes into profits. Here we have the option of setting the account to how we want it in the account using the mapping table. So I'm just going to open up a mapping table. So here we've got it set up once. If there's a change to be made, you go into edit, insert a new row, and then just save, and then it's ready to go to be used the next time you import. So once this is set up once, it can be run on demand, or it can actually be scheduled. So it happens um, at whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. You can choose how often. But very often, you will find that you have it partially scheduled, and you also want to run it on demand. After you've imported all your different data, the currency translation could be set up so it automatically follows that. So here, we have this. It would be already pre-set up with the currency translation. We choose actual data. We also could do currency translation on planning data and um, any other future forecasting type data. And then you choose the currency that you want to change to, so a, re a central reporting currency. So I'll be talking about currency a in a lot more detail in just a few minutes. So basically, that's it. It's uh, very simple, very straightforward, and set it up once, use it many times. The thing is, is that it's a wizard, and you can control how many you need. And if you need to add additional, you're shown how to build it, and you can build as many as you need. The next part of, one, getting data in there, two, the currency translation, is the organizational structure or the legal entities or locations that you're bringing in. So I've got Hong Kong highlighted right now. And I can see that it's got a currency translation or its home native currency is the Hong Kong dollar. In profits, you can have as many legal entities as you want. Uh, pardon me. You can have as many currencies as you want. And it is very easy to add more if you need it. As you can see, it's just a pick list. You select it, click OK, and it's set up once and used many times. What happens if you get a new location? Well, in profits, that's not a problem. It naturally rolls up and aggregates. To add a new location, it's just a matter of hitting the Add button, putting in a key and its name and then choosing its currency translation. Once that is done, it naturally rolls up and follows. So if I was to add a new one here in, this, in the Asia Pacific, it would roll in. 
Later on, I'll show you how you can dynamically choose the members from a reporting point of view. So if you were to uh, select in your report this top member and everything below it, you would not need to go in and edit the report. It would automatically flow. So that means zero maintenance reporting. The next thing I wanted to show you is accounts. Now, Profit has the ability of um, assigning account types, so revenue, expenses, assets, liabilities, and statistical. Profit can hold not only the uh, financial uh, chart of account information, but you can also bring in statistical information from other sources if necessary for your reporting or analytical requirements. So from an income statement point of view, we would choose whether it's an expense or revenue, and then you can actually choose the currency translation. So in this case, we're using an average monthly rate. There again, there's a radio button in which you can choose what rate is applicable here. We can also handle historical rates. So let me just go up to a balance sheet account here, and you can see that it's an asset, and we are using the month end rate. Like I said earlier, you set this up once, and you can use it many times. Any new account that you need to add in here, similar to what I showed you before, it's hitting the Add button and adding the account key and the name. There's a few other parameters that you can set up, such as uh, the asset type, which would drive whether it's a natural debit or credit. Now, that debit and credit is extremely important when it comes time to doing our journal entries, because like an, an ERP system or a general ledger system, debits and credits are very important when doing journal entries. Once this is set up, it can be used many times, and we can also import and update the chart of accounts from your ERP or GL system. The last part in this area is actually the exchange rates themselves. So here's an example of what a data entry currency rate can look like. And the reason I'm wording it that way is we have a very flexible reporting tool, and things can look differently based on how the company wants to perceive it. But in this case, the Australian dollar to US dollar, we've got in monthly rates, month end rates, historical rates, or no convert. Well, the no convert will be used for statistical information like head count, so that we can actually see it in its native currency of how many heads in there, and it'll convert with a one-to-one -one relationship so that we'll actually see it in its currency translated, which would basically take those uh, the, the number of heads so you can see it in both currencies. We also have the ability of, of doing it on um, multiple time periods. And we can do it on your actual information. We also can do it on plan, forecast, or any other versions of the information that you want to do. Im we can actually import rates if you have a data source of where you want to bring them in. So the benefits of using Profix for this collect information is that we've got an, a wizard that you can actually do for your importing. I showed you parts of it. You have the capability of setting it up with no help from IT. We can automate the currency translation by having the tie-in to the legal entity, the tie-in to the account type, and running that process I showed you earlier. I also showed you how easy it is to add and change structure. We can even move things around if, if necessary, but the control is in your hands. And everything in Profix is uh, either wizard-driven, point-and-click, drag-and-drop, or double-click. So next, we're going to take a look at Consolidate. So I'm going to be talking about our source data and, and the structure, talking about journal entry binders, and the audit trail and auditability. So here's an example of a report. It's not really a typical report. It has to, uh, it's been set up this way to show you the logic of what's going on behind the scenes in Profix. Now, we bring in the data from all your different legal entities, and it goes into a placeholder called source. That way you have a true audit trail back to its original source information. So it's unadjusted, and, it, and you can actually have got the trail audit trail there. Then we have another area where we can apply any adjustments, and we can do that using the journal entry binder I'll be showing you earlier. And then we've got the information consolidate. Now, many of you may be using Excel for doing your consolidation, and that's a great tool when you're working it with uh, many different systems. What happens is, though, on a month-to-month -month basis, you're always going back to square one. So the source information is completely unadjusted, and which is the way you want it. But then you have to apply the same journal entries month after month. In the profits environment, 
we've got, because of this logic of the source and the adjustments and giving us the consolidated balance, we actually have the ability to have you do the journal entry once for historical information such as ownership, uh, retained earnings, common stock, or investments in subsidiaries. You can actually do that journal entry one time and the information will carry forward so that the consolidated balance is always up to date. I have a personal customer that I worked with and monthly they were doing 150 journal entries. After implementing profits, because they were a company, a worldwide company with 26 divisions, uh, once we set up those initial one-time journal entries, the amount of journal, the entries they were doing going forward dropped to about 25 each month. And they were to handle things of restatements or amortizations, things like that. And then obviously the intercompany elimination. Now Profix also has the ability of being able to create more members than actually existing regular ERP systems. And they can also help you keep the information separated so that your source is never adjusted. And these could be elimination entries. So for instance, store one may have intercompany transactions with store two. Now you don't want to make the adjustment in store one and store two because you need to be able to report on them. So those could actually happen at a total level. So we've got the roll up unadjusted, we've got the adjustments, and then the grand total adjust, uh, adjustment. And this can also be applied to global adjustments. So here's an example of how it looks in the profits environment. And then finally for doing the journal entries is that uh, we actually have tried to mimic regular GLs and ERP systems. And by doing that, we've made it very familiar. So journal entries are go into what we call journal entry binders, and it can hold a series of them. Now, you may want to group your journal entries into types of adjustments like you're doing, such as IFRS or uh, GAP or um, converting someone, someone else's GAP into your GAP. These binders, you can have as many binders as you want and they can hold as many journal entries as you want. Now we talked about some of these could be one-time use only, but the information will carry forward from one month to the next. But most of the time when it comes to the reoccurring, you can have a set of journal entry binders that you use many times. Last thing I'm going to show you in this area before we get into the software is that Profix, like a GL, anything you do in our financial controller tool, which is where we actually have the ability of doing journal entries, has an audit trail on it. So the, the, you can't just delete something, it's recorded. You can remove it, but it will always be recorded in the posting report. And it will have all the information that is very familiar from audit reports from regular GL. That customer I was talking about earlier, they actually um, gave their uh, uh, auditors the chart of accounts from their many legal entities and their posting report for profits and told them to reconcile that to the grand total consolidation. They were hoping to get a savings in the hours of uh, being spent from uh, audit, but um, we know that doesn't really happen in the real world. So let's not, let me show you how this looks in Profix. So here is our financial controller tool in Profix, and what I've got open is a journal entry binder, and we've got many uh, journal entries already preset. You'll notice here that there is no dates or times here because this is reusable. When we enroll this binder, that's when we choose the time. We can have, we have uh, four different types of journal entries, regular, all the way down to one set up to help you get the intercompany elimination matching. So regular would be like a reclass. So let me just double click on this one. So similar to what you're used to, we've tried to make this very intuitive from a uh, person who works with journal entries in their GL system so that it looks very much the same. So you've got your account, we tell you it fits a natural debit or credit, and then you're increasing or decreasing the amount through the debits and credits. Now, the default in profits is that your uh, balance, these um, journal entries would balance. We do have the capability of doing unbalanced journal entries if required. So I'm gonna show you now an intercompany elimination type uh, journal entry. Now these can be a little bit more intricate in the fact that we can actually put in an amount, like hard code key in an amount, 
but we also have the capability of connecting it to some information inside the information that you've actually brought in from your source information. So here, we have, uh, we're picking up intercompany sales accounts for this particular location. Um, I've actually hard-coded the time here. We can actually dynamically set it up so it's like a current month so that you don't need to go in here and adjust this manually every month. Where's the information we're doing on the actual information? And then it will pick up the amount that's sitting in there. So what's happening here is that this, um, when I go back to this one, is this location or legal entity 101 has got an interim company transaction for that amount with 103. So how we've done that is we've used the industry standard of separating our intercompany transaction sales, cost of sales, receivables, and payables into their own separate accounts. So I'm just going to click on this again so that this is coming from a segregated intercompany sales account. Now, so this works, this con, um, connecting this to the, the source data works when you've got it separated. So that, if you're using that practice, it really flows nicely into the profits environment. So we have the entity has got a trans transaction, intercompany transaction with its counterparty at this location. Now with that roll up I showed you earlier, it determines where it's going to be doing the elimination. We have the ability of classifying what type of eliminations for reporting later on. And I can look at how it's going to be the viewing of the debits and credits here. This may look like a lot of work that I'm talking about here, but remember that you can set this up once and use it many times. I'm just going to close. So when I enroll this entry, you choose when you want to have it posted and what version you want to have it posted. So here's where it gets picks up the timing of what, when you're applying this. Now we can also connect this with, with a tool we have called Workflow, and that way we can actually build up uh, permissions and, and security in that somebody could be working on this journal entry and then submit it for someone else for approval. And they can uh, either approve it or reject it. If they're rejected, they have the opportunity of saying why they're rejecting it. So it can actually go back and forth many times until you get the final journal entry and everything is posted. So the benefits with the uh, using Profix for consolidation is, as I showed you earlier, we segregate the source information in a couple of different ways so that you're never changing that source information. So there's a clear audit trail. The, the binders themselves are easy to use and reusable. And as I showed you, you can actually choose the time that you're going to be using it. You can reuse it the next month. By connecting information, pulling directly from the source, we're able to automate and then the, the entries. And then I talked about how we can actually have other people approving it. And then everything you do in the financial controller has got its own audit trail above and beyond the audit trail that comes within profit. So let's next talk, talk about reporting. So what I'm going to do is show you some reporting examples and how you can actually do some slicing, dicing, and analysis on that information. And time permitting, which I think we have, I'll be able to show you how you can bind those reports together. Now, Profix, we like to say that we have a unified reporting platform that you can actually do many things from a single report. And that's true because our report template designer can be used for both data collection and reporting. So it's the same tool can be used for both. But I'll be concentrating on just reports for reviewing. From inside that report, we can get more, in, um, more detailed information like comments. These other ones line out of details and delta analysis are more applicable from a budgeting point of view, which profits can also handle. We can also drill across to the transaction level details if you have got a direct connection to the information. We're able to view the information from an ad hoc analysis point of view and actually be able to look at it vis uh, from a visual point of view of graphics. And with a single push button, we can push the information to Excel or SharePoint or any other of the, profit, uh, the Microsoft environment. So let's go in and show you it in profit. So I've got a couple of reports that I've um, put together to show you. Standard financial type report. So here we have a balance sheet. Now, 
We've got the legal entities going across. So we've got a roll-up of the Americas, which includes both North and South America, some other companies. And then we're able to show the roll-up before adjustment. And then if we have it, some other adjustments. And then our um, global, and I do believe I'm just going to show you that on a drop-down from the timing point of view. We can actually have multiple time periods here. We can even do multiple years. When you're setting up the report, you can choose what time periods that you want to display. You can even have the time going across the columns if you want. It's a very flexible tool. So right now we're looking at everything in a U, uh, reporting currency of US dollars. I wanted to look at it in their original native non-currency translated information. I just pick on that and just go look at it native. But when you think about it, these numbers no longer make sense being the roll-up and even uh, the Americas because that includes North America, including Canada and the United States, and South America, which has a combination of different currencies there. So these numbers don't necessarily make sense. As for the type of reporting being summarized or detailed, you can choose what level of information you're presenting in reports, which I will be showing you a little bit more. So this is just the first balance sheet report. Now I'm going to show you um, an income statement. And this one's actually formatted the same way, uh, with the currency drop-down and the time drop-down. But we've got the um, income statement information. But on this cell, you may note that there's a little red symbol in the upper right-hand corner. That's telling me there's a comment attached to this information. So all I have to do is right click, go into cell comment, and I can see the comment. I can see who created it, when they created it, and what they have. They can even attach other supporting details like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or PDF that they want. If I want to add additional reporting, all I have to do is go in and click on Add. It automatically puts in there the who and when and the type of, um, of um, uh, comment in there. Now, we have the concept of uh, type now in our comments because we actually have the ability of having some system-generated comments. Now, I'm just going to go back here. In an Excel environment, this comment would have been attached to the column and the row. In Profix, that's not how the comment is attached. The comment is actually attached to the drivers that is on the page. So in this case, it would be the Americas for the US dollar for January for this account, 45,000 returns and allowances. No matter who looks at that data, they will see this little symbol telling them that there's a comment on there. They can even view, we've got the ability of doing comment reports. Now, when you're in a report, you can very easily save to Excel, distribute. We can actually have profit set up so it communicates with your, e, uh, your um, uh, email system, whether it's uh, Microsoft Outlook or others, it could be automatically set up. And if you're using SharePoint 2010 or later, they, we can have push button integration to publish this report to SharePoint. So when you click on the distribute, you can have your choice of what format, Excel or PDF. And as you can see, do you want current page or all pages? Topics uh, gives you the ability to, um, there's security in the background. So people will only see what they have permission to see. Sorry, I actually created this, um, sent this email. Profix has the concept of um, the security at the, the level to, so that users are assigned the security to give them permission what they see. It's a very fine-tuned security, or you can actually do it based on roles. The point is, is that people will not see anything they are not given permission to see. And that's true from being able to view it in a report or whether or not you're sending it. Now, the last uh, consolidated report I want to show you is uh, cash flow. Now, Profix can do direct or indirect cash flows. And the thing is, is that if the information derives directly from the balance sheet or, or the income statement, we can use our centralized formulas to calculate it out, saving time. So this, this journal of uh, this um, cash flow can actually be used for actual information or planning information. But it's set up once and used many times. Keep saying that. The other thing is, is that if you have information that's coming from outside of the balance sheet and the income statement, we can use a statistical account to either import or key in that information so that you can tie it all in together. Now, I'm going to go out of the consolidated reporting to show you a little bit more of management reporting because the consolidated is only one part of it. 
So we also have um, management reports and, and or management style reports. And this is an example of a report that's got graphs in it as well. So this is a summarized income statement and we've got it set up quarterly. And down here we've got the sales and cost of sales. So we've got a drop down here on different lines of businesses. This could be different locations. So if I change what location we're looking at, the graphs can be set so they update automatically. From here, if the static report is not giving you enough information, you can easily right click, go into analyze, and you'll come out of the formal reporting and into our slice and dice analytical tool. So anything here with a plus sign beside it, we've got the capability of drilling down to get more information. So I can drill down on the first quarter. I can drill down on expenses. But you can actually think of this as a pivot table on steroids. Anything in this top header area can go in either the columns or the rows. So I can actually drag this organization on top of the total year and swap, swap them out. I can drag the versions on top of the total business and swap them. Now, I'm only got actual here, not a problem. Right click, go into the select, and I can choose from as many versions as you've got set up. The default when you set up profits is uh, an actual and a plan. But you can set up as many and name them whatever you want. So I'll bring over plan. We also have the ability of doing calculated versions. So in this case, I've got a dollar variant and a percentage variant. So now I've turned that simple report that we looked at before into an actual plan variance report, or well, on-screen analytical. Now, um, from here, I can also drill across to the source information. Now, this is assuming that we have got the information and we did a connection to it. So in other words, we've got that ODBC connection, online database connection to the source information. And I'm able to right click and do this drill across and run that. And what's actually happened is a query based on what I selected. So in this case, actual information for bad debt, for the 2012, for all lines of businesses. And it will give me the information that it has available. And in this and, and the amounts. Now the columns of the heading of the information that is set up here, you can choose. It depends on what system you're pulling the information from, whether it's your GL or some of these subledgers. So you're able to set this up once, and there again, use it many times. Now I'm just going to collapse this one, and then drill down and replace so that now we're just looking at general administrative expenses, and bring over time. Now earlier I talked about setting up reports so that they're dynamic. Now I'm going to show this example from a time point of view, but it is actually true on the uh, accounts and your legal entities as well. So when we're in time, I can right click and go into the selection. Now time, as people understand it, you can have months rolling up to quarters, rolling up to years. Well, in profits, we have the ability of going down actually to days, to weeks, to periods, it's all in how you configure it. Typically, from a consolidation point of view, you're dealing with months to quarters to years. Now, I'm just going to remove what's over here and show you how you can dynamically select and what does it mean. So if I highlight this and double click or right click or drag and drop, we'll just get the 2013. If I, I'm going to move to 2012. If I right click, I can add that member or I can add the members as and there's a very different list, and they mean different things. If I choose member plus descendants, I'm basically saying everything, the months, the quarters, and the years. So it actually represents 17 time periods. Now, I'm just going to expand this. So if I go back to uh, that list here and say, just give me leaf descendants, that's basically the leaves of the tree is the way we like to describe it. So this is just the 12 months. So I can bring over the 12 months in total year. Now, any additional items that would be in here would be automatically picked up. So let's use that example now from, the, um, uh, from an account point of view. So if I expand the income statement here and go into the operational expense and general admin, if we were to add in a new account in here, using the dynamic settings to say that we want this level and everything below it, it would automatically be picked up. 
and you will not need to go in and update any reports or the ad hoc because it would automatically have picked it up already. That means you can have zero to no maintenance at all. Now, there's lots of features in here, but I'm just going to highlight some of them. Um, you, can, um, you can manipulate the information in many different ways. But I, the best thing I'm going to show you right now is going in and saying that we actually have the ability of graphically viewing this information. So we have the chart in which you can change the information and look at it from different types of charts. I'm going to choose just a simple column chart. You've got different color schemes. So right now we're viewing the information in a grid format. I could look at it as a total chart or a grid chart combination. Now right now I've got uh, January through to December and I've got the total year 2012. I can actually go up to the top area, make the changes by right clicking and removing that total year and that chart automatically updates. Now we have the capability of pushing this information to Excel. If I was to do it right now, we would get not only get the grid information at the top, but we'd also get that full chart at the bottom in full charting format that can be used in Excel. So this way you can actually do graphical uh, pictures here as well. Now everything I've shown you in here, I'm just going to go back to the viewing in grid format. Everything I've shown you here is, been, um, is how a consultant sets things up and it's been using point and click, double click, drag and drop, or a wizard. We've made that easy because we want the business owners to have the ownership of this, not IT. This was all designed to put the control in the hands of the business users. The other thing about all this analytical is that we started from a report and we went into the right click and went into analyze. I've changed the report. It looks significantly di different than how it looked before. But this is actually the first step of building a report. I just need to save this as a data view and then drop this in our template designer and then make it look pretty. So the reporting is really full circle. The last thing I didn't actually say earlier is that Profix is working on the SQL back end. And so that when you hit the Save button on anything, it is stored centrally. So that means that everybody's looking at the same version of the truth. Everybody uh, who's got permission to see the information will see their part of it, no more. But everybody's looking off of the same database. Okay. So um, there's one other area I'm going to show you from a reporting point of view. And um, it's something called our Smart Monitor. And the reason I'm showing it to you is because it's a way of being able to manage and maintain and um, make action on the key performance indicators of the different legal entities or management sources uh, of the information that you're looking at. Now, I went into a uh, revenue collection. So you can have as many collections as you want. And uh, this is just a way of buckets, putting uh, different groupings around your information. So revenue collection. So here, we've got units and we've got sales dollars. So here's where, as an example, we can bring in non-statistical information. So the units are doing better than the sales dollars because the zero is our nominal point. This is what we're expecting. So the key performance indicators behind the scenes here are, have already got the parameters of what they expect it to be, what's best case, and what's worst case. And then I can see graphically that units are doing better. Why is it doing better? I can actually click on this and drill down and see why. And going into this sheet here, I've got a bid reg X. That's telling me that this isn't a weakness situation. I can see things are trending pretty well, but this is not meeting the parameters. Now I can actually go into the ad hoc and just by clicking on here and looking at the information. You'll notice that there's some comments in here. They were automatically generated from, by that smart monitor. I can also look at those comments. But interesting enough, we can actually assign this to a person and actually go, please, well, please explain this one. And then click on that Explain button. Now, that person could get a task where they're asked to explain why this is in a weakness situation. So there's a little bit of inf more information that was sent with this 
as in they were expecting 500 and they got 429. Please explain here and click OK. And using our workflow tool, that will be sent to the person who asked for that information and the comments attached. So when you're dealing with um, a consolidated environment, you can actually have these metrics that you're tracking and be able to monitor them. The final thing I want to show you is that all of our reports, and I'm just going to actually go back to my dashboard here. Let's, um, all of our reports can be bound together and created into to, um, binders, books, however you want to call it together. We can actually bring in multiple reports that you've created in the profits environment. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, pictures, and uh, you can bring in other information as well and put it together in a report that can be emailed and distributed to the people you want it to go to. Now, the beauty here is the profit security will limit what they can see. So in this case, this person, um, this is a consolidated balance sheet. If the person doesn't have permission to see things at a consolidated level, they won't get this balance sheet. So they only get what they have permission to see. So we can actually automate and streamline the, the distribution of the reporting. So the benefits of the reporting is that hopefully I've shown you how flexible it is. The easy maintenance, by choosing things dynamically, we can actually set up reports so you never need to go into them again. Everybody's working off of the same centralized database, so there's one version of the truth. And the ad hoc analysis tool, and this being able to slice and dice and, and uh, change what you're looking at, is basically an on-demand self-service analysis tool that you can actually put in the hands of the users. The last thing uh, is that um, I've only shown you half of what profits can do. Uh, from a consolidation point of view, we've talked about um, collecting and managing the data, the consolidating, and the reporting. Profits can also do, whoops, sorry, uh, also do budgeting, forecasting, what if scenarios, because we are actually a, a complete corporate performance management solution. So when, if you buy profits or you're using profits, you actually own the entire software. And you can choose what you implement and when you implement it. So that concludes my presentation of the profit solution. And I'll turn things back to Ernie. Oh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sandra, for that um, outstanding um, content and, the, and all the detail behind it. I'll go ahead and um, open up our uh, Q&A session. Again, I encourage you to please ask questions on today's topics via the questions area in your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, Sandra, my um, first question um, focuses on the exchange rate. Can you speak to the ability um, to import exchange rates maybe from outside sources into the system to use? Well, um, profits with that import tool I showed earlier, it can also be used to import information like exchange rates. So if you can make a connection to the data source, now if you're pulling it off of the web, you probably need to download it into some sort of text CSV or Excel file, but an easy import can be set up. Now the beauty is, is that if you name that um, file that you're getting it from the same name every month, it's reusable and, and rather than having to set one up every, uh, every month. So we can streamline and automate that part of the process. Okay, um, great. Just kind of a follow-up question. Um, can you speak to maybe some of the other types of information that you're seeing clients um, pull in, maybe from outside sources, some of that statistical information that you mentioned? Well, it's quite varied. We have some people are doing project management, um, headcount planning, um, headcount analysis, inventory. I've seen it used for accounts receivable and accounts payable. Uh, very often, uh, sales. Sales information and all the different variations, whether it's customers, products, uh, lines of business, sales people. This product, because it's all based on wizards, it's limited by your imagination. And uh, we've got some very imaginative customers out there that have done some very unique and unusual things with it. OK, great. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, some, uh, one of the attendees is asking a question around, they have consolidated reporting that's based on a legal entity structure that is different from how they report to management. Can you speak to how Profix can handle the situation? Yes, um, Profix um, has the ability of being able to have it used once for that consolidation uh, 
reporting, but you can also reorganize it and using what we call member properties and do an alternate hierarchy so you can actually report on it from a management reporting point of view. So legal entity wise, if you've got sales departments in each one of those legal entities, you can actually have them all roll up and have a total by the sales department so you can actually take a look at it and report on it from that point of view. Okay, great. Um, next question um, is about I'm pushing um, reports out. Can you speak uh, a little bit more um, to the ability um, to automatically um, push uh, reports out from the system? Well, I didn't show a lot of our workflow. I more talked about it. But we have a tool um, that's not just designed to do the checks and balances such as um, an approval process. Our workflow includes the ability of setting things conditional on other pieces. So when you've finished your consolidation and you've got the final approvals on everything, you can actually have um, that process that does the report distribution automatically run after the action of the final approval. So that would automate rather than having people to, to trigger it on their own. Now accountants are naturally conservative people. Not all of them would want to do it, but knowing you have the capability once you're comfortable and know that it will be fine. Okay, great. Just kind of a couple um, follow-up questions on the, on the, um, the ability to, to send things out automatically. Um, do you have customers um, that, that actually set up some automatic um, emails? So, so let's say a journal entry needs someone's approval. So once that goes into approval status, are there ways to send out an email um, to that person who needs to approve it and then set up the frequency so, so they make sure that things aren't getting stuck kind of uh, you know, in that consolidation process? Yes, that's actually part of that workflow again. Um, time permitted, uh, 45 minutes is such a short time. The, our workflow includes email notifications, so you can actually have it set up so when things trigger, such as you are asked to do this journal entry or review this journal entry binder, it also includes reminders in there. So you can send out reminders before something is due, but more importantly, when something is due or overdue, you can actually set up profits to send up up to nine emails a day. I personally like to call that automatic nagging. And of oh, course you can blame profits, not yourself. There you, there you go. Hey, uh, it's kind of a related question. I think you spoke to that, but so, so do you have customers um, that are setting out kind of uh, you know automatic um, reporting um, based on specific? Maybe they're tracking a KPI, and then they, if there's some sort of variance, then that automatically sends something out. Are there is, are customers doing those types of dynamic things in the system? Um, the not quite the trigger. Um, we're not quite there yet. Uh, I wouldn't put it past us on having it on our plan for the future. Uh, we are talking more about having those types of triggers. Now, it's more like an event trigger, such as uh, somebody uh, saying uh, that they approve something or an action has been complete, could tr trigger the distribution of these types of reports. Uh, so it has sort of, at this point in time, it needs to be planned in advance. Now, Profix has a, a huge feedback forum, and practically every change in our software happens from feedback from our customer base. So I'm actually going to write that one down, make sure uh, if it's not on the list that I add it to the list because that's a great idea. Oh, fantastic. Um, next question um, is kind of a, you know, a great general question. Um, uh, what, what's the most common mistake um, that you still see companies making um, when, when looking, about, uh, looking at how they close and optimize the close process of their books? That's an interesting question. Um, although it, it, the close process sounds like it's very similar, it's actually very different in all companies. I mean, we've dealt with companies that have very long closes, like that last month or a month or months, to those that actually have to get things done in a very, very rapid amount of time. The, the thing is, is that there's steps. Um, accountants are very process-oriented people by nature, so there is the steps. So most of us have checklists. And uh, what Profix allows is for you to automate that checklist in that workflow tool I was talking about. Now, from a consolidation-specific point of view, there's a best practice of being able to separate your, um, your intercompany eliminations. Now, it's still not done very much in practice, and that's one I would definitely encourage, because if you can collect that information during the 
the events that happen, such as an intercompany transaction, this being sold to that, and it's part of your back-end process, it will save you so much more time at the consolidated month-end process. Does that answer your question? Yes, great, thank you. Um, in general, uh, next question, do you see firms using, trying, trying to leverage their own ERP systems and optimizing the financial close and reporting? Are you seeing um, um, more firms go to leveraging a uh, specialty solution? Well, we profits were never designed to replace the existing ERP systems. If you have one that can do your full consolidations as an accountant, that's where you should be doing it. We were designed for the disparate system, so the multiple systems that do not talk to each other. And if you're, especially if you're doing it currently in Excel. So that's where we were designed to do it. Um, the thing is, is that some people's ERP systems were not configured properly in the very beginning to handle the changes that have happened. And that's when people look at these other systems to try and extend the life of their existing system because I must admit, these. Um, Corporate performance management solutions are significantly less expensive than replacing a full ERP system. So we've got customers where we've extended the life of their ERP systems and even taken over some of those capabilities that are not being handled sufficiently in their existing GL environment. Okay, great. Um, thank you. I know this might vary a little bit by company, but can you speak to generally um, how long it takes for someone to 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 implement um, the, the software you're discussing today, the, the pieces of it? Well, that's, that isn't a very interesting question because Profix actually has a platform that works from a single user environment to our largest customer that has well over 2,000 users using the Profix environment. So the implementation time varies based on complexity. Now, we've got very large companies that just use it for reporting. So if you're just putting it in for reporting, it, it's a very quick implementation. And we always talk in weeks, not months, not years, definitely not years. We're talking weeks. So reporting can be done very quickly. If you want reporting and budgeting, we need to layer in a little bit more time. Uh, consolidations, if you just want to start out with consolidations, that's a, I mean, it's also depends on how much effort you want to do. So we're extremely variable on how long things take because our best case scenario from an implementation is a collaborative environment where we show you how to do things, but we sit on our hands and let you physically do that themselves. Because the knowledge gets transferred, we've got a more successful customer, a happier customer who's self-sufficient. So, but we do have the ability of doing turnkey in which we do everything and then just hand it off. Surprisingly, those are not as successful because the knowledge was not transferred quite as much. So that middle of the road where it's a collaborative approach is a collaborative um, time scale as well because some of the effort is being done by the existing customer or the uh, client, whatever you want to call yourself, you're doing part of the work. And, and that means you're not paying um, a company like myself, Profix, to do it. Okay, great. I'm trying to rephrase this question to, uh, as well as I can, not being a, an accountant. So, um, so uh, to me, um, it seems like um, a lot of the customers um, are using your system as the system of record. Um, do you have companies that are actually uh, pushing the data back um, to the ERP systems, or, or is that something in general they're they're trying to keep clean, so to speak? Oh no, we um, we have a lot of customers who do push the data back to um, their ERP systems. Um, the general ledger, usually most of the, the newer ones have very good standard reports already in there. So Profix has the ability of exporting the data and into a format that can be re-imported into the other system. Plus, because we're on the Microsoft SQL backend, that's an open architecture system, which means that other systems can connect into our database and pull data from there, assuming IT gives them permission. So I wouldn't... We have strong reporting capabilities. I don't know what the statistics are, but I do know that we have many customers who are pushing data back to the ERP system. Okay, great. Um, next question is, can you speak uh, a little bit to, you know, when, when you're giving um, um, demonstrations, um, what, are, what are maybe the top two concerns um, that, that, that people, hesitations that people have in moving to this type of solution? And can you speak as to how that may have changed um, over the past few years, was it security, is it still security, or are there other issues that, that cause people some sort of hesitation? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, 
Well, the hesitation is, is that accounting departments are usually understaffed and overworked. So it's the time to implement. They feel that they don't have the, the energy to do an implementation. They know it will save them time down the road, but it's the balancing act of, of trying to get it in there. That seems to be a big fear that some uh, people have. Uh, it's usually when the pains become too much. It has changed um, because of the complexities of consolidations and the more legal entities and the, especially currency translations and the onus on the accounting departments getting things right. Um, having a uh, system that's got um, checks and balances that you can actually develop into the system, um, the uh, being able to get approvals, digital signatures on the approvals, and also some of the calculations that are so complex, having them centralized and having them controlled a lot better and um, much more than you can in the Excel environment. I've been seeing that a lot more frequently because there's the concerns of the legal suits that have happened in uh, various countries where people had formulas that were wrong and there's huge ramifications on that. So trying to standardize and put control on that where Excel is fantastic, but it's harder to put those controls in place. Thank you. I've got a, a few more questions here before we close out the Q&A session. Okay. Uh, can you speak, um, again, just a little bit more to the ability um, to track um, adjustments by users? So, for example, can you run a user report that shows, you know, that who's, who's changed things and j just the ability to track adjustments in general? Well, in the um, posting report, you can actually pick and choose what users have done what. So you can actually, uh, you can definitely report on, from a user point of view, from uh, the, the journal entry binders that they have. We also have a couple more levels of um, audit uh, trail as well. Like the most secure audit trail is on our journal entry binders. But we have it on the rest of the system. So you can always tell what, where they've gone into and what action they were working on. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to, well, one, for the sake of time, I've got one more um, question uh, for you. Um, in, in terms of, you know, um, the, the companies um, that you're working with, can you speak a little bit um, to the, you know, to the top three, uh, not only the expected benefits that they, they, they've realized, but maybe more interestingly, the unexpected benefits that they may have, have seen from going to this type of solutions? Well, I think the expected benefits is that you're going to save time and, um, well, saving time, freeing, uh, giving them more time to look at the information rather than spending most of their time collecting and getting the information in a format that's usable. I mean, that's the expectation, I think, going in. But I think people are actually surprised by when they actually get it back, too. It, as in, they get more free time. They get more ways of analyzing the information. So I think it's a bit of a surprise to them that they they did get that check mark on getting their things, but it, they got it so well that they're very happy and pleased with it. Now, I will we'll say that I'm a worked accountant, and I actually like doing the slice and dice and analytical work. So I've met many of them out there that are also worked my, like me and actually have fun doing it. So it adds... Um, a uh, strange layer that they're more enjoyment into their job because they feel like they've got more time to do the, the analysis that they uh, would have had before. Does that answer the question? Well, absolutely, yeah. So you know, just to make kind of your last point again, it seems that, you know, like I said, those who enjoy the accounting, it, it, it seems to unlock, some, in some sense, the, the strategic value um, of the accounting function. Um, so with that, that will, that will conclude our Q&A session. And we'll and we'll, we'll coordinate with, with our speaker in getting any questions that were unanswered and posted on performative.com. Uh, As a reminder, you'll be asked to take a short survey once the webinar concludes. We greatly appreciate your feedback, and we invite you to please join us at performative.com to ask any questions you may have and continue this conversation with your peers and the expert you heard today. A special thanks um, to Sandra for her time and insight. She is clearly a thought leader in her field and excellent source of information on today's topic. Note in our post webinar survey. You'll have the opportunity to express your interest in being connected with her and or our sponsor, Profix, with just a few clicks of your mouse. Uh, a final thank you uh, again to our sponsor um, today, who's going to Thought Leadership allowed us to make um, this event possible. And I'd like to thank the audience um, for your valuable time. And, and my final thanks and goodbye is that we hope to see you again soon at performative.com or at a performative event or online. Uh, make the rest of your day great. Thank you very much. <laughs>